We've shown how software is a really powerful tool because of the templates that they have and how we can use it to build really custom page layouts. But did you know that it also works really well as a dashboarding tool? And the reason is because they have powerful charts that are able to aggregate Airtable data and then display that to your users. Now, in one of our implementations, we built a partner CRM because there was a manufacturer who was selling through the channel and wanted to be able to talk about the opportunities that were currently in the mix with their partners. And we're gonna show an example of how we can use CRM data from Airtable to be able to view that as a chart inside of software. Hi, I'm Dan Lehman from automationhelpers.com and we're an Airtable and software implementation partner. If you haven't started with software yet, you can get started for free using the affiliate link in the description below. Software gives us a lot of ability to aggregate and report on the data inside of Airtable. We can do narrow or wide data sets. Maybe we're looking at analytics data that we're trying to report on. In this particular example, we're going to pretend that I'm a sales manager and I'm looking at our sales data to be able to report on how our individual sales reps are doing. Now I'm using the sales CRM template, which you can utilize out of the box. And I'm making a few tweaks to it, but by and large, you can use this as a good example to get started. In our opportunities, we can see the name of the opportunity, the owner or sales rep that we're looking at, the estimated value, and when we think we're going to close that opportunity, the expected close date. So if we go inside of Softer, I've already connected to Airtable, which I've shown in a few different other videos. Let me go ahead and add a new block here, and I'm going to search for a chart. You can see that we have a few different options when it comes to our charts here. We're going to choose a stacked bar chart for this example so that we can have that grouping by the sales rep. So let's go ahead and choose our data source that we've already set up. We we'll use our CRM demo base that we have, and then I'm going to use my opportunities table as the basis for the data that we're aggregating. Now at this point, it's really not telling us anything. All we've said is what table we're connecting to. But if we go into features, this is where we start to actually choose our aggregation here. So we've got the type of stacked here. In this case, we're going to go with sum, but you could do reporting with averages, mins, max, counts. There's lots of different options on how we want to aggregate that data. And the field that we're gonna go off of is our estimated value because we wanna see the size of those opportunities. Now, don't worry if this doesn't display exactly what you see. Sometimes we need to finish and add a few more fields before it's going to show us the relevant data. And then we can preview that as well. So we are going to show our estimated value as our metric that we're looking at. And then we need to group by, and in this case, we're first going to do the group by, by the date, the expected close date that we have. So let me click that value and we can see that this is now starting to populate. So we've got this. In fact, if I preview this, we can start to see it take shape, make it a little bit larger on the screen here. Now we can see our different opportunities and the values and dates as we hover over that. And let's go ahead and now we want to make it so that we can see it grouped by that owner of the opportunity or essentially the sales rep. So what we can do here is we can add a subgrouping. Let me turn that on here. And in this case, we're going to say that owner field that we saw is who it's going to be grouped by. And so this should update, but there's something that still seems a little bit off about this. And maybe you can guess what this is if I preview it again. But take a look. If we hover over each one of these, we see a different rep for each color. But if you look at these dates here, they're just arbitrary. This is only showing the date, that expected close date itself. Well, when we're typically doing charting and reporting, we want it to be over a certain time period and have buckets that this falls under. We don't want to just say, hey, throw every single date on that axis. In this case, I'd want to view it by week because we're looking at a single quarter's worth of data here. So the one thing that I'd recommend is when you're using charts inside of software is that you do most of the business logic inside of Airtable because Airtable has the formulas which lets you make the modifications that you need and think of softer as the ability to then render that on the screen. So let me come back into Airtable and I'm gonna show you what I did here is instead of just having the expected close date, what I did is I created a formula called expected close week. And in this formula, it's pretty simple, but I'm basically parsing that date field and I'm saying, hey, give me the date of the start of the week. Because if we have, I don't know, two dates in the same week, a Monday and a Wednesday, I want them bucketed into the same week starting point. 
So we can do that by creating our own formula field. You could do that by month. You could do it by quarter. However, you want to be able to think about that. Because then back inside of Softer, that's where we can, instead of actually looking at our expected close date, we could now look at that expected close week. And when we make that modification, this is where we're going to actually see it stacking. This is now kind of the, the meat and potatoes of what we're getting at, both the aggregation and then having that subgrouping. So let's take a look again. And the thing that's just a little bit off still is if we hover now, you'll see that this ID equals user email. And when you have that linked record to a user, that user has an email address, they have an ID, they have a name, and we don't want all of that information. That's not really relevant to us. So again, back in Airtable, because we've got the power of formulas, what I did here was I created an owner name field. And you're gonna laugh. All I did is reference the actual owner or that linked to the assigned to, reference that field because that's going to render it as text. It's not going to have all that other data about the ID and their email address and that kind of stuff. So if I go back into Softer and now I reference instead of the owner, let's change this to the owner name and we'll go ahead and preview this again. Now when I hover over, it makes a lot more sense. We're seeing our sales reps. How is this sales rep doing? Oh, great. I can see all of the dates of all their opportunities and when they're closing. Now, of course, we can make this more visually appealing. We can add a title here. So this could be more like Q3 opportunities by sales rep. And we'd be able to add different charts to this dashboard so that we can be looking at multiple metrics at the same time. Now, there's some additional functionality in terms of determining, hey, do you want someone to be able to download? Do you want to show those tooltips? And it's pretty handy, right? Because we can actually download this, save it as an image. So if you have an executive who can't even get them to bother to log in and look at your dashboard, just shoot them an image of that aggregated data. And one more thing that I think is really useful is the ability to add those conditional filters. So in most applications, you can say, yeah, if the status is this, don't show it, filter it out, that kind of stuff. But in this case, we could actually say, hey, maybe show me when the sales team for this equals, and you could pull in the logged in user's status. In this case, I'm not hooked up to a user's table, but imagine if on that user, you had the sales team that they were a part of. And now you could filter, hey, whoever's logged in, if they're part of the East sales team, they're going to see the East sales team opportunities. And that is so much more powerful than many other no-code solutions because we're actually filtering based on the context of the logged in user. Now that you've seen the power of software charts and dashboards, go ahead and get started using the link in the description below.